Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video, courtesy of www.simplydiag.net. It's another bright and sunny day in Cheshire. I've got my mask on. Today we've got a 2017 Ford Focus RS 2.3 high pressure petrol. It's had some cylinder head work and it's not basically crank no start. And so we looked at it and it's got a fuel pressure control issue and I just want to run you through a, th a few things what we're going to be using today we're going to be using Forescan uh, which is the Ford based um, scan tool um, from Forescan.org we're going to be using the Hobby Tools sensor simulator and from Hobby Tools available from Diagnostic Connections and we're also going to be using the Picoscope 4425A available from Technical Topics, Diagnostic Connections and Pico themselves so Hope you enjoy the video. Right, so at the moment we've actually got the vehicle running. The vehicle is now running. It's uh, quite a nice tidy car to be honest. Um, you can see we've got four scan connected running on a bog standard laptop and we're looking at fuel low pressure, desired and actual, um, voltage from the fuel low pressure sensor and then rail pressure, desired and actual and duty cycle. Um, we've, we've connected from, from the laptop by a USB cable we go into the car and we're actually using my KTS 590 as a pass through device um, you can use force scan with the, the, the low cost Elm interfaces and that but I'm actually using my KTS 590 for this as in pass through mode and then we've also got it connected to a breakout box so if you've got any questions at all about Forescan um, then I direct you over to, I'll put a link in the video description over to SY Diagnostics, he's done a series of videos on Forescan so I'll put a link in the description, um, go over visit his channel and there's all you need to know about Forescan is, is over there on Steve's channel. So at the moment we've actually got it running and you can see I've got the fuel pressure regulator, a high pump disconnected and back probed. If I connect the high pressure pump, it will not run. Then I've also um, I've got my scope connected up. Scope's grounded through my fuse ground lead from uh, Esme Creations. That's where you can get that from, autodiagnose.eu or esme-creations.eu I've got the Pico 4425A with the smart BNCs I've got that set up, courtesy of Picoscope So what I'm actually monitoring there is both sides of the fuel pressure regulator and then also the fuel pressure sensor which is down there and then I've got the Hubby Tools sensor simulator available from Diagnostic Connections. I've actually got that piggybacked into the back of the fuel pressure sensor and I've got it putting out 0.6 of a volt. So that's the only way I can get this vehicle to run. The minute, the, the basically the minute I take that turn the sensor simulator off and the rail pressure once it gets its true reading because the high pressure pump has failed once it gets its true reading the vehicle actually cuts out so I'll show you that now we look at the live data and watch what happens so we're looking at fuel, fuel rail pressure voltage and fuel rail pressure and I'm now going to turn the sensor simulator off You can see the voltage shot up. Something very, very iffy going on. Turn the sensor simulator back on. It puts that half a volt back in and now the vehicle will start again.
There we go, she's running again. It's all magic. So the, the sensor simulator, very, very easy to set up. It's got its main lead goes to battery positive and battery negative. Then we've got the red lead goes out and sends the signal down that we're simulating and the black lead just going straight to ground. So that's the only way we can get it we can get it to run. It's uh, quite an interesting case study this. And then looking at the we actually look at the using the Pico scope, we'll have a look at the big scope trace so what we can actually see there. Um, blue is the control for the high pressure pump, green is rail pressure voltage and red is the, the return for the pump. So I'm going to plug the high pressure pump back in now. Immediately see something's happening on the return line. Look, the duty cycle has changed. You can actually see the kick down there from the coil in the regulator. And we can also see, well, I don't know whether you can, but there's loads of smoky vapours coming out the back of the vehicle now. And there we go, she's just cut out. You can see there the, the rail pressure voltage. Has dropped down to dropped down to zero. Now it's jumped up. It's all over the place. So some really, really good faults. Like I say, the 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 DT the original DTC that was stored. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. The original DTC that was that was that was that was stored in it when I first came to it was P C six and P O two. So I got me I got me got me DTCs wrong there. Yeah, it's quite quite an interesting fault this, so at the moment what we're trying to do, we still don't know what's cause and effect, so this raises a lot of questions. We don't know whether it's the high pressure fuel pump that's gone faulty, and we've actually got more high pressure fuel, we've got more fuel than, we, than the vehicle thinks it has, or we've got a faulty rail pressure sensor. Now I've checked, I've checked the rail pressure sensor, there's three, three wires going to it, a 5 volt reference, a ground, and the signal wire back to the ECU. I've checked all. I've checked all three wires, and when I unplugged the fuel rail pressure sensor, um, the reading on the on the wire at the connector goes up to five volts using the scope and also in live data. So that proves that my wire from the sensor back to the PCM is correct. If I substitute half a volt, I can actually get the vehicle running as long as the high pressure fuel pump is not connected when I start it. So the, the, the question now is, is the high pressure fuel pump supplying too much fuel and my rail pressure reading is correct or is it providing not enough fuel and my rail pressure reading is incorrect or it's providing not enough fuel and my rail pressure reading is wrong. Now the vehicle came in running as an overheat it's had cylinder head work um, and that's as far as the story goes it's had no other work do, done to it all the wiring's proved to be intact 
if we look at the if we look at the dealer wiring from all data it's very you know the the wires for the regulator go straight back to the ecu there's no external fuse and i'll show you that right now So looking, looking using um, using all data. One of our Simply Diagnet partners, free trials and uh, member discounts available. Following the links in the portal. So this is the OE diagram for the 2.3 EcoBoost. Okay, and what we're looking at there, fuel pressure regulator. You can see uh, the yellow violet is the control wire and the green blue is the return so this actually works the opposite way round to most normally you would have a 12 volt supply and the control would be through a pulse width um, or duty cycle ground this is actually the other way around it's a permanent ground and it's supplied with a pulse width power to make it function so that's different than most things you most of them you would come across so that's the wiring diagram and if we actually go to the pin out so we're looking at pins 77 and 78 you can actually see that they're the green violet and yellow violet control fuel pump ground fuel pump positive so all the wiring's intact we're actually getting what we need to see and we can we can see that using using the oscilloscope actually see that using the oscilloscope so the question now is where do we go next what tests do we do what logical tests can we do how can we prove what's wrong because the rail pressure sensor if available is not going to be cheap I wouldn't have thought the pump certainly are not going to be cheap and the vehicle was running when it came in so where does that leave us if, uh, if we get a chance to do another video later, if it, if, if it doesn't rain or anything like that, maybe we'll get a part two. Thanks for watching. You're awesome. Don't forget www.simplydiag.net.